be yourself. This is Dr. Rajesh Sharma and today my topic is cell cycle regulation. You already know about the cell cycle, about the mitosis, meiosis. I'm not going to tell about the portions. I will just deal with the uh, with the regulation portion. How uh, I cycle, uh, how which signals regulate the passes of one stage to another in the cell cycle. So let's start. In case of eukaryotes, cell cycle has two stages. One is interphase, another is amphase. Interphase is what are divided into G phase, S phase, G2 phase. There is another phase which is Z0 phase, and in this stage, cells are metabolically active, but uh, they doesn't undergo proliferation. Why they remain in this phase? Because uh, they uh, check the requirement of the cell division if it is not fulfilled then the cell will enter in the resting stage and this resting stage is known as G0 phase. Embryonic cell cycle unlike the other cells in case of embryonic cell cycle there are only two stages one is the mitosis and S phase it doesn't have the G1, G0 and G2 phase. It first divided into two cells, then four, and then finally developed into the eight cell stages. Cells at different stages of cell cycle can be distinguished by their DNA content. When we will plot a graph between the numbers of cells and amount of DNA per cells during the cell cycle, then we will come to know that there, in case of G1 stages, the cells have diploid number of chromosomes while in the S phase it varies between the diploid and 4N stage of the, uh, of the DNA. While 4N number of uh, this, uh, DNA is present in case of G2 plus M stage. How we analyze this? We analyze this with the help of flow cytometer or fluorescence activated cells shorter. Cell cycle regulation. If cell will continuously uh, go on di uh, div dividing, then what will happen? It will develop into cancer cells. And another point is that if it has, doesn't have the proper nutrition, uh, not have the proper condition, then it also will affect the cell cycle. So in, uh, during the passes of each stage, whether from G1 to S, S to G2, there are certain checkpoints which, uh, which check out the requirements in the cells. So let's see what are those. These are the nutrition, cell growth and DNA replication. If you will see this graph, then if the DNA will be damaged, then the cell cycle will stop at the G1 stage. And if it is unreplicated or damaged DNA, then again it, there will be another checkpoint during the S phase where the cell cycle will stop and it will again go for the repair stage. And G2 stage. There will be again another checkpoint which will check out the unreplicated or damaged DNA. In M phase, if the chromosomes are not aligned or misaligned, then it again will go for the repair process and it will not uh, uh, lift the cycles to go on further for the cycle. Uh, how this regulate, I will explain it in detail. Before this, there is another important point is that DNA should be replicated only once per cycle. So how it get regulated? Actually, during the G1 phase, what happened at the position of ORC, which is the origin recognizing complex, MCM complex will bind to it. And when it enters to the S phase, then it will be detached out and now it become active and DNA polymerase will act and it will continue its process which I have already explained how DNA undergo replication in my video in under the molecular biology section of DNA replication you can get that link in my description and uh, after that it will in the G G2 phase it will completely uh, undergo replication and it will now it I have shown, shown you that during G2 and M phase there are 4 n number of chromosomes. Now it has changed to the 4 n number of chromosomes. There are certain protein kinases and cell cycle regulators which regulate the cell cycle process. What happened in 1971 to independent team of researchers Yoshio Moshai and Clement Market as well as Dennis Smith and Robert Ekmer, eh, sorry, Ecker have identified MCM, which is the maturation, maturation promoting factor in frog or site. 
what they do they first chosen the inactive oocyte which were restricted in the g2 phase then they have a nickel uh, which uh, unable to pass to the s phase then what they do to activate it they have inoculated or ejected uh, cytoplasm from the active frog oocyte to uh, to the g2 phase of the inactive one then it uh, they were it was seen that it was easily passed to the s uh, phase so here mpf which is the maturation promoting factor was recognized as the regulator for the cell cycle process further research was also continued in that what they conclude the second approach understand understand that cell cycle regulation was genetic analysis of h they have chosen uh, yes sir saccharomyces cerevisiae as a study material what uh, during their budding what they see that cell cycles is regulated by a mutants known as cdc which is a cell division cycle and this gene encodes a protein known as a kinase protein further they have identified two genes cdc2 and cdc28 as the gene in the est then the gene protein kinase which encodes the cdc2 and cdc28 uh, in genes has seen to have uh, uh, to express a similar conserved sequence in case of eukaryotes which is known as cdk1 in 1986 tim hunt and his colleagues discovered cyclin what they have found that the cyclin uh, found a certain protein which has uh, undergo rapid increase and rapid decrease in during the cell cycle it undergo rapid increase during the interphase and rapid fall down during the mitosis you can see this graph here as there was uh, cyclin of this complex so they named it as a cyclin then when james maller in 1988 purified mpf and undergo molecular characterization then they found that it has two complex one has cyclin b and another another is cdk1 so we can see that this, this cyclin b and cdk1 is the complex or uh, is uh, both combined together to form the mpf it means cytoplasms has this both complex to have uh, to activate the cell cycle or regulate the cycle cycle of uh, cell from one stage to other in g2 phase what happens cyclin is synthesized then it will bound to the cdk1 cdk1 has three phosphorylation site one is the as threonine 161 that is in 14 and that is in 15 when threonine 161 is phosphorylated it will activate the cyclin b or the or the mpf complex but the phosphorylation of tyrosine 15 and 14 uh, uh, leads to the inactivation of the uh, of this complex mpf complex and the for, for the phosphorylation of tyrosine 15 v1 is required so for the activation of this complex cdc 25c will dephosphorylate the uh, po at the position of tyrosine 15 and 14 and now it become active and will enter the m phase what happened during m phase the cyclin b is degraded and it will and uh, in m phase it will again uh, recycle to the uh, big uh, sorry g2 phase this is not only that uh, only cyclin b and cdk1 is there there are different families of cyclins and cyclin dependent kinases which regulate the cell cycle if we will see in g1 phase it is a stop uh, site where if there will be present of cdk1 uh, cln1 cln2 and cln3 in case of s then it will pass out to the s phase and from uh, for the passes from the s to g2 there is a requirement of cdk1 clb5 6 and for the uh, for the completion of last stage of cycle which is the m phase it requires cyclin cdk sorry cdk1 clb1 2 3 and 4 complex in the case of which there are requirement of regulation only three stages and this will also function similarly as i have explained here that how during the amps uh, uh, how it will pass from g2 phase to m phase 
how phosphorylation take place, how dephosphorylation take place. In similar manner, it uh, it will all this in all these phases, this will form complex and degrade, and then again recycle with the uh, recycle in the cycle uh, cell cycle. In case of animal, this function is not that much simple because it requires multiple CDK and multiple cyclin proteins from the passes of a G1 phase or the from to pass out the from the stop size or site of the G1 the requirement of CDK4, 6 and cyclin D uh, from G1 to S the required CDK2, cyclin E, S2, uh, G required or to regulate during the S phase it requires CDK2, cyclin A and from S to G requires CDK1, cyclin A, G to M requiring require CDK1, cyclin B. This was uh, if we will see in the graph way we will see when we plot the concentration of cyclin versus the different phases then we will see then cyclin D is required in whole the process with the highest amount in the S phase and G2 phase. Similarly cyclin E will require from the passes of G1 to S phase and from cyclin B is required from, S, from the passes of S to mitosis and cyclin B from S to mitosis. This is how the concentration is also regulated during the cell cycle and it is very interesting. This all was in my video. In my upcoming videos, I will deal with the further checkpoints. This was only the raw materials or the regulatory systems, how they regulate, but how in each stage this get regulated. For example, in G1 stage, which I have already explained during the interface, how uh, it will regulate the replication of DNA or just once and how if there will be the the damaged DNA or the unrepaired DNA or some uh, does, uh, some uh, damage in the DNA replication is there then how this checkpoints will activate or uh, active become active and how it will regulate I will discuss in my upcoming video so don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't forget to share too and if you have some more topics in your mind then don't forget to comment that topic in my uh, video in my just in my comments so that I can upload that for you. Till then, goodbye and have a nice day and be yourself.